Link summoning is the most easily accessible and arguably most powerful XX summon mechanic in Yu-Gi-Oh! A large part of that is because of the existence of Link 1 monsters, and how they let you get extract plays at a very little investment from the board. So to start off this list at number 10, we have Link Karibo. This is a Dark Cybers monster with 300 attack whose Link material is one level 1 monster. Its first effect states, when your opponent's monster declares an attack on one of your monsters, you can tribute Link Karibo to reduce that monster's attack to zero until the end of the turn. Second, while in the graveyard, you can tribute one level 1 monster you control to special summon Link Karibo from your graveyard as a quick effect. Link Karibo is one of the quintessential Link 1 monsters. Most Link 1 monsters aren't super powerful in their own right, but their primary goal is to start off your plays in some way. Link Karibo accomplishes this by being able to put any level 1 monster you've got into the field into the graveyard without sacrificing any card advantage or overall Link materials in the process. As one of the earliest Link monsters release, Link Karibo saw play in tons of early decks in the Link era, partly because there were so few Link monsters available. But this still didn't stop it from seeing play for a long time just because of how useful it was. It was a critical piece of the first dominant Link strategy with the Tier 0 Spiral deck, thanks to the ability to put Spiral Quick Fix in the graveyard after you summoned it, letting the Spiral player use Quick Fix's graveyard effect to summon itself and search another Spiral Gear card while maintaining the same Link material on the field. Thanks to Link Karibo's graveyard ability and Quick Fix's lack of a hard once per turn, it wasn't uncommon to see this happen twice in one turn. Link Karibo facilitated this kind of interaction for tons of different Link decks. Goki would use it to put Goki Octo Stretch in the graveyard to get its search effect off, Drytron would use it to send a Drytron monster like Drytron Alpha Thuban to the graveyard after summoning it off of a card like Drytron Nova so they could use its graveyard effect ability and get the ritual monster search effect. Orcus had Orcus Brass Bombard, Thunder Dragons had Thunder Dragon Matrix, Alter Geist had Alter Geist Mulisik, and the list goes on and on. There are tons of examples of decks with useful Link 1 monsters that you'd put in the graveyard, and the solution to that problem would be including Link Karibo. Some decks wouldn't even have level 1 monsters in the main deck, but still played Link Karibo purely because of its positive interaction with Scapegoat. Being able to ramp up the stalling power of Scapegoat by turning tokens into Link Karibo, or allowing decks to Link Climb by turning those tokens into real effect monsters on later turns, gave Scapegoat insane Link Climbing value early on in the Link era. Another abusable aspect of Link Karibo in history is how easily it made you Link in an extra deck locking during Master Rule 4. It's a downward point in Link Arrow and minimal cost meant to co-linking away from one extra monster zone to the other and filling up that second extra monster zone didn't take nearly as much investment as other options. A very common strategy in heavy Link spam decks like Goki or Spiral. Link Rebo is one of the most ubiquitous Link monsters in history due to its early release and general utility in many different meta decks that have some use for level 1 monsters. And next up at number 9, we have Link Spider. This is an Earth Cybers monster with 1000 attack that requires one normal monster to use for its Link Summon. Its effect is that once per turn, you can special summon a level 4 or lower normal monster from your hand to a zone this card points to. Link Spider has a whole lot in common with Link Rebo. It's also one of the earliest Link 1's release, coming out in the Link Strike structure right around the same time as Code of the Duelist to usher in the Link Summoning Era. Its effect is fairly powerful in a deck that does have some normal monsters to use. For instance, World Chalice and Gem Knight decks would have some normal monsters required in their engine that Link Spider could grant a free special summon to. But the more important thing about Link Spider isn't its effect. Link Spider was most often used as a way to turn tokens into effect monsters to allow further Link Climbing, as mentioned earlier with Link Rainbow and Scapegoat. Most powerful Link monsters that Link decks want to climb into require either monsters with different names, like the infamous Nightmare cards, require effect monsters like Axis Kotaker, or just plain forbid using tokens for the materials like Appalooza, Bow of the Goddess. Link Spider allowed any deck with token generation to convert tokens into powerful Link climbing payoffs like these. Early on, Spiral would use its converted tokens created off of Blackwing Go for the Vague Shadow into real materials. Decks would use it in tandem with Link Karibo to turn leftover scapegoat tokens into real plays. Famously, it allowed you to turn the absolutely absurd amount of tokens generated off of number 42 Galaxy Tomahawk into effective Link materials that otherwise would have been stranded on the field. Even more modern decks like Adventure Engine decks would be able to go into powerful Link plays like Artifact Dagda and Predaplant Verte Anaconda thanks to Link Spider converting the Adventure token generated off of Right of Armaseer into an effect monster. Basically, any deck that made tokens and could capitalize on Link Climbing had to find a place in its extra deck for Link Spider. It was in nearly as many decks as Link Karibo, but with even more modern relevance and a legitimately powerful onborn effect in certain strategy. And at number 8 on this list, we have Striker Dragon. This is a dark dragon with a thousand attack that requires one level 4 or lower dragon monster as its material. With Link Summit, you can add one boot sector launch from your deck to your hand. Also, you can destroy one face of card you control to add a rocket monster from your graveyard to your hand. Striker Dragon is the linchpin extra deck monster of the rocket archetype which itself is the core of the incredibly powerful Dragon Link deck. Like most Link ones, it does a job of putting any low-level Dragon monster you summon from the field into the graveyard, which works nicely with its own effect to return a rocket monster from the graveyard to the hand. 
Its ability to search the Archetype's field spell, Boot Sector Launch, means that any dragon you summon can turn into powerful extension play as Boot Sector Launch lets you special summon up to two rocket monsters from your hand to the field. So any summon of a low-level dragon can immediately convert into two more special summons. On top of that, Boot Sector Launch gives you a card in the field to destroy to use Striker Dragon's recursion effect. Striker Dragon is almost always the opening play for Dragon Link to get the ball rolling on its many different combo lines thanks to these features. Not only that, but there's plenty of low-level dragons that have graveyard effects that Link in the Moffer Striker Dragon enables. The most common one is Star Lead Seyfert, who instantly pluses you from the graveyard with his ability to banish itself to add a level 8 light or dark dragon from your graveyard to your hand. Even its one link arrow is pretty useful. Typically, you would want Link 1 monsters that have downward pointed arrows so you can special summon more Link monsters, like with Link Karibo and Link Spider. But Striker Dragon's left pointing arrow means that subsequent Striker Dragons can help you fulfill the graveyard conditions of Guard Dragon Pitsy, or the now banned Guard Dragon LP, to have multiple Link arrows point into zones more easily. It's easy to get a Link monster in the extra monster zone with the downward pointing arrows, but left and right pointing arrows usually cost a Link 2 or higher. But Striker Dragon lets you get there for one Link material, making it not only a super powerful combo starter, but an incredibly useful piece of extension to enable the rest of the next plays, by just having a funky Link arrow for a Link 1 monster. Striker Dragon shares a similar role to Link Aribo and Link Spider in Dragon Base decks, but it also raises the standard for how powerful a Link 1 monster can be with its multiple powerful effects and utility. And at number 7, we have Trap Trick Sarah. This is an earth plant monster with 800 attack that requires any non-Link Trap Tricks monster as its Link materials. Its first effect is to be unaffected by trap effects. Secondly, when a normal trap card is activated while Sarah is on the field, you can special summon a Trap Tricks monster from your deck to your field, so long as it doesn't share a name with any other monsters you already control. Its final effect is that when another Trap Tricks monster's effect is activated, you're allowed to set one whole trap card directly from your deck. Trap Trick Sarah is an absolutely insanely powerful card for a Link 1 monster. It has built-in trap protection, which works great in the Trap Trick's trap-focused strategy with cards like Torrential Tribute, allowing you to clear a field but retain your own monsters. But its other two effects are what really allows it to shine. Being able to special summon a monster from your main deck is one of the most traditionally broken abilities you can attach to a Link monster. Sarah will frequently summon out another Trap Tricks, which will usually have an effect to immediately give you advantage such as Trap Tricks Dianea, who can recur a whole style trap card from your graveyard to your hand, like Bottomless Trap Hole or Gravedigger's Trap Hole. This will immediately trigger Sarah's last effect, setting another trap hole card for you. For the cost of activating a trap card you already want to activate, Sarah gives you a plus 3 in immediate card advantage. All for a Link 1 monster, which costs you basically nothing to get on the field. Sarah's absurd list of abilities is the cornerstone of the modern Trap Trick strategy. As the deck fell out of relevant meta contention years before Sarah's release thanks to trap based strategies becoming less and less viable compared to more powerful monster combo decks. While Trap Tricks hasn't been a top tier deck for years because of these inherent limitations associated with trap based decks, Sarah's capabilities alone brought Trap Tricks from a complete joke of a deck back to minor relevance decent rogue strategy. With the recent release of the new Trap Trick Structure deck in February this year, giving the deck some other more powerful legacy support, the archetype is squeezing into lower tier viability. And that's in no small part due to how Sarah already gave the deck an incredibly powerful card advantage engine on her own as a foundation. Sarah is so powerful that it's often said that she reads like a custom card designed to be absolutely broken. And when you're on the receiving end of a Trap Tricks player going plus 3 every turn because of her, you definitely understand that feeling. And at number 6 on this list, we have Guard Dragon Pitsy. This is a dark dragon with a thousand attack that requires one level 4 or lower dragon monster for its material. While Pitsy is on the field, you can only special summon dragon monsters. During your main phase, Pitsy can special summon one dragon monster from your graveyard or banished zone and summon it to a zone that two or more link monsters are pointed to. This effect is once per turn, and you can only summon Guard Dragon Pitsy once per turn. Guard Dragon Pitsy is another Link 1 entry that you can credit Dragon Link for using to its fullest. While the aforementioned Striker Dragon is Dragon Link's starter, Pitsy fulfills the role of being an incredibly powerful extender that actually gets these dragon combos online. But it's not limited in the same way Striker Dragon was to just extending with rocket monsters. Pitsy's ability to summon any dragon meant you could recycle generically powerful dragon effects. Famously, it was used for recycling pre errata Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, and its ability to special summon another dragon from the hand or graveyard. Before its errata, this effect lacked a hard once per turn. So you would often get on the field, link it off, and then Pitsy it back to enable ridiculous chain of dragon based special summoning. Pitsy would also let you capitalize on the effects of the other dragons that needed to be sent to the graveyard to trigger their effects. For instance, if you use Foolish Barrel on a monster like Absa Router Dragon to get its ability to search a rocket monster from your deck, you would need to special summon it from the graveyard and link it off, or otherwise get it back to the graveyard. This is where Pitsy, despite not technically being a rocket monster, fit right into the rocket strategy. This combination of different dragon archetypes and dressing together is what gives Dragon Link its non-archetypal name. 
As mentioned in the Striker Dragon section, Dragon Link has been one of the most consistent and present meta decks in the game for multiple years, as cards like Pitsy can continue to help work with this seemingly never-ending supply of powerful, generic dragon monsters that continue to release and love slotting directly into Dragon Link. Following that at number 5, we have Prank Kids Meow Meow Mew. This is an Earth Rock monster that has an attack that requires a level 4 or lower Prank Kids monster for its Link material. It can only be summoned once per turn, and its effect is, if a Prank Kids monster you control would tribute itself to activate its effect during your opponent's turn, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead, saving the monster from being tributed. Meow Meow Mew is the most important card in the Prank Kids strategy. All of the main deck Prank Kid monsters have effects to special summon other Prank Kids from the deck whenever they use this material to summon a Prank Kids extra deck monster, as well as gain some other small advantage on top of it, like Prank Kids Lampsies burn your opponent, or Prank Kids Fancy's ability to send a Prank Kid from the deck to the graveyard. Prank Kids as a deck existed before Meow Meow Mew, and was a fairly competent strategy, as an entire deck full of monsters that can special summon more of themselves and eventually cascade into powerful boss monsters, like Prank Kids Battle Butler or Prank Kids Rip Roar and Roaster was a decent strategy. But in its original incarnation, it had the problem of not always being able to efficiently get the Prank Kids from the field to the graveyard without including some other monster to link off into a Link 2 monster, like Prank Kids Dodo Doodle Doo. The deck would run cards like Instant Fusion to supplement this with a free special summon to make linking off the first Prank Kids easier. But with the release of Meow Meow Mew, Prank Kids suddenly became one of the most consistent one card combo decks in the game as any normal summoner prank kids being sent to the graveyard for the Link 1 Meow Meow Mew kicked off an entire combo line that got to the very powerful Battle Butler or Rip Roar and Roaster. On top of that, Meow Meow Mew would also double up on the power of Battle Butler and Roaster, as they both tribute themselves to wipe one half of your opponent's field, Butler destroying all monsters, and Roaster destroying all spells and traps. Meow Meow Mew's tribute substitution graveyard effect meant you could use these powerful board wipes and still have a second activation as they were not once per turn effects. With the later inclusion of the powerful Adventure Engine, Prank Kids would become arguably the best deck in the format on the back of the Meow Meow Mew's one card combo potential and the Adventure Engine's ability to protect that combo or supplement the board wiping capabilities of the more versatile Omni Negate and Wandering Griffin Rider. It wasn't long after the strategy started winning that Meow Meow Mew found itself banned, turning this once dominant deck back into a fringe strategy. Bannably strong, Meow Meow Mew shows just how powerful being a Link 1 monster can be in the right deck. And at number 4 on this list, we have Sky Striker Ace Kagari. This is a fire machine monster with 1500 attack that requires one non fire Sky Striker Ace monster for its link material. On special summon, Kagari can return one Sky Striker spell from your graveyard to your hand. She also gains 100 attack for each spell in your graveyard. Finally, you can only summon Kagari once per turn. The Sky Striker archetype revolves around Sky Striker Ace Ray and a series of powerful in archetype spells like Sky Striker Mobilize Engage and Sky Striker Mecha Widow Anchor to answer all of your opponent's threats and continually a cure card advantage. Ray herself will link off into a series of different type Link 1 monsters, all with unique effects to help answer your opponent's threats and positively interact with your own Sky Striker spell cards. Sky Striker Ace Kagari is the most powerful of the many Sky Striker Link monsters thanks to its ability to recur Sky Striker Mobilize and Gage from your graveyard, though it's not uncommon to return the other Sky Striker spells when the situation calls for it. The story of Kagari's power level will always be tied to the power level of Engage, an absolutely insane spell card that allows you to add any Sky Striker card from your deck to your hand besides another Engage, and then draw another card if you have three or more spell cards in your graveyard. This card was often compared to Pot of Greed for its ability to plus one in card advantage if you fulfilled its three spell bonus effect, but potentially being even better, because it was searchable off the effect of Sky Striker Ace Shizuku or Sky Striker Ace Hayate, though it was locked behind decks that to run other Sky Striker spells to benefit from this card advantage. But since those spells were often very useful, it usually just played out to being just a hard plus one. In a game where Upstar Goblin is powerful enough to be limited, it's not hard to see how good Engage is, and Kagari meant that you could resolve Engage twice in one turn very consistently, which multiplied the power level of this draw engine even further. Thanks to this spell, Sky Striker Mega Horner Drones, any deck could splash in a small Sky Striker engine of however many copies of Engage are legal, one Kagari in the extra deck, and a couple of other useful Sky Striker spells, like Sky Striker Mecha Widow Anchor or Sky Striker Maneuver Afterburners. Engage itself could search drones, drones could summon Kagari, and Kagari could add Engage back to the hand. This engine, while critical to Sky Striker's control based game plan and the backbone of its relevance across multiple years as the best control deck in Yu Gi Oh!'s history, was also just usable in every deck. While they could, every deck was running 3 Engage, 1 Hornet Drones, and 1 or 2 Kagari just for a draw engine. Even when Engage was banned, some decks would still just run Hornet Drones Kagari, as Kagari could still return Hornet Drones turned into a 1 card engine that makes Link 2 materials. This would inevitably lead to the limitation of Kagari, though she would return to 3 when Engage was banned, as that was the more problematic card. Eventually, Engage was brought back to 1, creating a small revival in Sky Striker more recent years. 
Even as recently as 2022, Sky Striker as a rogue deck could still win major national level tournaments and YCSs, all thanks to the power of Sky Striker Ace Kagari. Next up at number 3 in this list, we have yet another Dragon Link staple, Guard Dragon LP. This is another Dark Dragon with 1000 attack that requires one level 4 lower dragon monster for its link material. It shares Pitsy's restrictions to only mean specials on once per turn, and to only allow you to summon dragon monsters while it's on the field. What puts LP so far above Pitsy is that it can special summon one dragon monster from your hand or deck to a zone that two or more link monsters are pointing to. As previously mentioned with Trap Trick Sarah, special summoning a monster from the deck is one of the most powerful effects a link monster can have. What makes LP so broken is that it has such a large pool of generically powerful cards to choose from thanks to how good dragons are as a typing. Every card that Pitsy could combo with, LP abused even harder. Getting any of those monsters to the field was the goal in the first place to gain access to their on-field or summon effects, like Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, or to immediately link them off for the graveyard effects like Apps or Router Dragon. While both LP and Pitsy needed the setup of creating a zone to link monsters pointed to to enable their abilities, Pitsy always required you to get a powerful monster into the graveyard or banish in some other way for its effect to be online. You would have to find some other way to search out the monsters that you'd want Pitsy to get into rotation. But LP completely bypasses that one weakness by being able to do the searching itself. There are endless different dragon summoning combos that start off with summoning LP, special summon a dragon monster from the deck, getting its effect, then leaking it off for Pitsy, summon that monster again or any other dragon monster, and gaining advantage and material to an absurd degree. And nothing stops you from just linking them off once you've gotten the most out of their effects completely bypassing the only real downside they have. Pitsy is a great Link 1 monster, but LP is undoubtedly one of the most broken Link 1 monsters ever. LP's power level and Dragon Link's dominance is what eventually earned it a place on the ban list in 2021, after a couple of years of being a non-stop meta-dominated force, despite it receiving other hits and erratas to the deck prior to LP's banning. Attaching an effect to special summon from the deck on the same turn you summon a Link 1 monster was just far too broken to keep legal. And speaking of which... Taking number 2 spawn on this list, we have Nightmare Mermaid. This is a Water Fiend monster with a 1000 attack that requires one Nightmare monster besides Nightmare Mermaid as a link material. When Link summoned, you can discard a card to special summon one Nightmare monster from your deck. You can also draw a card if Nightmare Mermaid is co-linked when this effect activates. While on the field, Mermaid decreases the attack and defense of all monsters by 1000 points unless they are co-linked. Compared to the previous entries on this list, Nightmare Mermaid is a bit odd. It is technically a Link 1 monster, and you could summon it by only using one material, as there are main deck Nightmare monsters like Nightmare Corruptor Ebly, who you could summon and immediately link off. But the most common way it was summoned was just by using one of the more generic Link 2 Nightmare monsters, like Nightmare Cerebus or Nightmare Phoenix for its materials, as they were easy to summon compared to the very limited number of main deck Nightmare monsters. This functionally made Mermaid a 2 material Link 1 monster, but that didn't really matter given just how powerful its effect was. It basically reads that you discard a card to summon Orcus Nightmare from your deck. And while the discard was a non-trivial cost, it often helped you set up your combo even further by ditching Orcus monsters like Orcus Harp Horror or Orcus Symbol Skeleton to the graveyard for their graveyard effects. Summoning Orcus Nightmare represented a slightly stripped down version of the basic Orcus combo thanks to its ability to banish itself from the graveyard to put any dark machine monster like Orcus Harp Horror, which could set up players with an Omni Negate trap like Orcus Crescendo, or set up a spell speed to access to Dingursu the Orcus Evening Star, thanks to the combination of Orcus Simple Skeleton the Graveyard Effect and Orchestrated Babble, granting Orcus Monsters quick effect speed for their graveyard effects. This small engine combo was so accessible and so powerful that while they were legal, basically every single deck in the game ran a small Orcus shell. Spiral, Luna Light, any number of different variations of Danger decks, Thunder Dragons, you name it. If it existed in the format and wasn't otherwise locking you into a certain summon limitation, it would run Nightmare Mermaid because it was such a low investment to turn any two monsters into a Nightmare, then into Mermaid, and then into that full combo line. This was aided by the fact that Nightmare Extract monsters like Nightmare Cerberus and Nightmare Phoenix were incredibly powerful utility cards in their own right that still see play today. The fact that any Toon Link material can get you to this point is part of what made the previous entry on this list, Sky Striker Ace Kagari, powerful with its ability to be summoned off of Sky Striker Mecha Hornet drones, return drones, play it again, and suddenly you have two monsters with different names that can summon a Nightmare from the extra deck, and get you into full Nightmare Mermaid combos without so much as committing a normal summon. This combo stuck around for over a year as other pieces of it were banned or limited around it, but it became too much of an automatic inclusion in decks over time and eventually Nightmare Mermaid got itself banned in mid-2019. To this day, anytime a card can single-handedly get two Link materials on the field, players joke about how that would enable full Orcus combo. Quite the legacy for a quite powerful Link 1 monster, but still not as powerful as the final card on this list. 
And finally, taking the top spot on this list, we have Link Cross at number one. Link Cross is a light cyber monster with 900 attack that requires one Link 2 or higher monster as its Link material. If it's Link Summoned, you can special summon a number of level 1 tokens up to the Link rating the monster used for its Link Summoning material. Those tokens can't be used for Link materials for the rest of the turn, and that effect is a hard once per turn. Link Cross, much like Nightmare Mermaid, doesn't really function like a Link 1 monster because of its requirement, but that increased investment is well worth the effect. Summoning tokens is incredibly powerful in Yu-Gi-Oh! especially when it comes with minimal extra restrictions. Monsters like Number 42 Galaxy Tomahawk and Mecha Phantom Beast Aurora Dawn are similar extra deck examples of completely busted and now banned token generator. Link Cross lives up to that status as one of the most overpowered extra deck monsters ever. While it was originally intended to be a way for synchro decks to function by giving them Link Arrows to summon during Master Rule 4 and some tokens to get some plays going, giving Link decks easy setup for synchro summoning opened up a can of worms that quickly became a problem. The most degenerate example of this and its synergy was with the fellow banned Link monster Christian Hockey Fibrax being able to immediately capitalize on Halky Fibrax's ability to summon a tuner by then linking off Halky Fibrax and gaining tokens to synchro summon with that tuner. This would then usually lead into Martial Metal Marcher, which would then lead into a slew of different combos all ending on degenerate boards. It's hard to overstate just how many different setups this little interaction enabled. And even then, that's underselling it, as there wasn't just one way to abuse it. Decks like Adamancipator and Dragon Link had plenty of access to their own tuners to comp off with the tokens, for instance. They could still capitalize on Link Cross even if Christian Hockey Fibrax was negated. Any powerful synchro deck basically just had a completely generic and easy access token generator. You could even combine the level 1 tokens with Link Rib on the graveyard to even continue some Link plays if you wanted, circumventing the Link summoning restriction. Link Cross is one of the most powerful extra deck monsters ever, not just among Link 1 monsters. It will likely always have a well-earned home on the ban list because of how low investment token generation is just far too good on an extra deck monster. Alright, and that's the list. Are there any other Link 1 monsters you think deserve a spawn this list? Do you have any ideas or topics you think I should cover for future videos? If so, leave those suggestions down in the comments below.